Hey, Mary. Hi. Hey, how are you doing? Good. I'm but I'll start. I'll start the meeting a little early today, and we maybe we can just chat for a minute. Uh, have you guys started in uh, Brunei already? No, we've got. Um, uh, the kids have got another three weeks. Oh, so okay. this time in three weeks, they will have had their first day back. And we go back on the Wednesday before with, you know, induction and usual fun stuff. Yeah, I know we, today was our official first day, but uh, they just told us maybe on Friday that returning uh, teachers didn't need to start today because they're just bringing in the new hires. It's like, oh, okay, great. So nice. we're doing everything online anyway. So it's like, okay. okay. Oh, we're... Oh, wow. We're a little bit worried because our school's not very old. That's well, I mean, the school itself's been around for a while, but um, the they built a new building about five years ago, and um, fairly typical in Asia. I don't know that they use the best materials, and so it's um, the the uh, block that I'm in. Um, all on not on my side, fortunately, but on the other side has had to have all the walls ripped out and completely redone so everybody who was on that side has put their stuff in in the rooms all on the other side so me being me had got it all not and I knew they were going to move some stuff and I helped one of my friends was leaving Brunei so um and it was her room so we moved all her stuff into my room and I still had my things just how I wanted but one of my other friends was actually um been into the school and had a look she thought she'd just pop in and grab something out of her room and she said it's a nightmare this like everything's all out of everybody's rooms and stacked up and all sealed up and dust everywhere. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> it doesn't sound like anybody's having a good start of a year because, well, you're the only one that was actually going to go face to face with uh, anybody in our class, whereas Vietnam and Thailand, we're not, we're not looking to go back. Yeah. And then, and then we just heard at my school that the, the deputy head and the principal were just let go on Friday because and it was like it was like what and so and and they were solid they were really really but our numbers are down we're a brand new school we just started last year and it was just like oh and so uh oh yeah, yeah. So we've I've, been really lucky like we've been we've been growing so when I I actually got offered the job in March 2020 um, and I was back in New Zealand and um, really excited great you know it's fabulous school and part of the world I want to be back in and um, th then they were like I had the acceptance letter but they were really start getting the contract when I was and you know COVID was really starting to hit you know that end of March time and I started thinking oh I can feel things you know going belly up and then my phone my cell phone rang and I could see it was a Brunei number and I just thought oh I know what's going to happen sure enough it was HR saying numbers dropping schools you know off, um, you know all doing everything's online and etc cetera, etc cetera. and so I spent the rest of the year in New Zealand you know relief teaching or cover teaching whatever you call it thinking I've got this small window of opportunity to get back overseas because my daughter is, you know, was going into first year of IGCSE. So, um, you know, I didn't want to muck that around. And um, and then out of the blue at the beginning of the of September, I get this email saying, hey, do you still want the job? It's like, hell yes. Wow. So it just took a little while to get visas. And um, we ended up going, I think it was about the 9th of November, we finally flew out of New Zealand but um, the school's just grown and grown and grown again and now all of primary is starting this um, semester with four classes in every year group and I've only got I think 18 or 19 kids but we cap at 24 um, but you know they're, they're just getting enrollments all the time so we've been incredibly lucky really. That's fantastic. I think the fact that we're just such a big new school with COVID hitting at the same time it's just like People are going, especially in the lower years, they're going, why am I going to pay? We're the most expensive school in Thailand too. Why are we going to pay so much to send our kids online in uh, yeah. if they're five and four years old? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. just like, yeah, I'm going to let Heidi in. And he's chatting with just you. She's <laughs> <laughs> uh, It's like me, you have to remember to turn everything on. Though. Hi, Heidi. Mike, oh, oh. hello. How are you? Good. Mary and I were just talking about everything. No. Right. <laughs> yeah. Life. Yeah. COVID and schools closing and numbers dropping and all those 
depressing things. Yeah. I, I, I imagine it's an international trend for younger kids' parents, if they're paying a big tuition, to not want to be sending their kids online if they know that it's going to be online for, you know, who knows how long, right? And so probably parents are going, I'm not, I'm not going to pay for that. <laughs> uh, I'll wait until it's going to be back face to face and then we can go, okay. Hi, Emily, back again. From Eunice, did you get things sorted? Still quarantining away. Still quarantine. Yeah, you can get a lot sorted while you're quarantining. I, I found I got so much stuff done when I was in quarantine. <laughs> uh, that's That was my plan to start with, but it's like dwindled these last few days. <laughs> Netflix is always there. No. <laughs> more like the Olympics. Like I just like oh. if the Olympics weren't on, I would do a lot more, but I'm just watching the Olympics all day, every day. How do you see the Olympics? Is it on TV for you or? Uh, there's a Vietnam channel, a Vietnamese channel. And so like, I'll have that going. Plus I have my VPN and I'm logging in via uh, a website in the U.S. Okay. But sometimes I've got two screens for all the events. That's exciting. Yeah, I haven't <laughs> seen any of the Olympics. I've heard about some things, but I haven't seen any yet. Hi, Hannah. Welcome back. So Olympics, has anybody else been watching the Olympics? Have you? Okay. Yeah. And Hannah, you, are you watching it on a channel, TV channel as well? Oh, I think you're muted. I'm streaming it, so I've managed to find a good stream. Oh, okay. I'll have to ask you about that later. Okay. <laughs> I, I probably could Google it and just figure out how to. I just haven't cared to yet. And think, although I, I did want to see, I heard about the... Uh, it was a boxing match where the guy supposedly got uh, disqualified or something for an unintended uh, headbutt. And I wanted to see the replay of what happened for that uh, because he should have won maybe, but he didn't. I don't know. I just wanted to see <laughs> so much stuff. I've just, oh. put it, I've just put it in the chat. That's oh, nah, thank you very much. <laughs> nice. nice. Uh, so I know that Jenna or Jennifer is not going to join us today. Something came up, but then uh, nobody else has written to me about that. Were you all able to see the second batch of YouTubes that I sent out? Or did anybody yeah. care to? I didn't okay. know. Uh, when you check. sent the YouTubes the second round, that worked fine. That worked. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that was nice. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you a secret. I'm so glad that the first round didn't come, go out. <laughs> Because after I sent it and it was totally gone, you know how you have Google send and undo that. Are, I'm like, I, I wonder what's on the video. So I watched the video and I didn't realize that it started recording. Like as soon as I turned Zoom on. And so I'm sitting there, I'm eating chips and kind of picking them. Up, <laughs> <doing whatever. laughs> and then I'm like, oh my God, everybody got this. And then when Ark or somebody wrote back and said, I couldn't get an access to it. And somebody else did too. I'm like, oh, thank God I can edit the video. <laughs> Where I'm not realizing that anybody's looking at me right now. <laughs> so you got the edited nice version. <laughs> but there's a there's a really embarrassing version out there that's gonna be deleted soon. <laughs> that one you should delete in seven days for sure. It, it automatically deletes. <laughs> the so. other one, you know, has educational value. So we'll yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I was so oh thank God it didn't work. The, the, the first time I've ever really wanted technology not to work and it worked in my favor. <laughs> Never had that before. <laughs> yeah. So quarantining and then Thailand, we're quarantining, not, not on purpose, but we're kind of doing it. Is, is uh, up in uh, Chiang Mai, is it kind of on lockdown there too? Heidi? Oh, I'm in Bangkok. You're in Bangkok. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's UAD <laughs> in, uh, yes. in France. Yeah. Sorry. Cruise She's never, there. no. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Isn't that her name? You're, Who knows? you're in okay. Bangkok. Where are you in Bangkok, Heidi? Uh, my school is in, um, uh, you know, Ramintra Road by okay. Fashion oh, Island. Yeah. It's kind of by Fashion Island, yeah. But oh. I actually live in Patum Thani, which is... Patum Thani. Okay, I know Fashion Island. I was there. It's a big mall. Yeah. When, <laughs> when I went, it was on COVID, and so there was nothing open. It was right, big. it's just wow. a big empty mall. Yeah, <laughs> we just everything these days. I know. <laughs> Uh-huh. So it's 6.06 oh, six already. I wonder if it's just the five of us. Because uh, normally I get started three minutes ago. Uh, why don't we get started? 
uh, because they I can, can send a message to Ark just in case. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but maybe because I think it might have been the first day for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So they might have, uh, oh, see, saw what? <laughs> when all of a sudden, you know, the first day, a lot of people, uh, you have this to do and this to do and start doing a whole bunch of tasks. So I'm going to share screen for a second, see that it still works. And here we are. And press play on this. And here we go. So what we're going to do for an icebreaker today, welcome back, first of all, is, and this is kind of interesting, these icebreakers are not from me, by the way, they're from Seesaw, is in 30 seconds or less, share something you learned from a Seesaw presentation, and I put in parentheses, this is mine, actually, or something that you just really love about Seesaw that we haven't seen already, and then sell it to the group, and then share the best part and the biggest personal takeaway that you hope to use or already use. And then you'll have one minute to do that. And if it's okay, you can start ruminating and thinking and I'll do mine first. <laughs> uh, each person is gonna share. Okay, this was mine. So my elevator pitch is about progress. I can't tell you how much I love progress and when that came out. And the reason that I love it so much is that I used to do this with Excel sheets. I used to do progress by myself and I would sit there and I would go through every student in every class and do exactly what progress is doing. I didn't even ask for it to be done from Seesaw, but when all of a sudden it came out and it was just there, I was like, what? <laughs> if they're doing it for me. So that took like hours and hours off of my, uh, my what I was doing from week to week to week and I just thought I would show another little quick uh tidbit if you don't know this already let's see uh is in progress if you don't know you can go in and you can go right back to wherever and it doesn't have to be week to week you can start from day one and then go all the way and choose in progress that I want to see to the end and that way uh you can see a lot more than just the week, the one week. And I didn't do that properly. So if I went all the way back, da, 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 da. And maybe you know this, hopefully you did, but then I'll go to the end and then okay. I can see everything and see a lot of progress that's actually taking place. And I love that you can see if uh, it's still in draft from students mm. or if you haven't responded. So that means that it's in draft by students and, uh, Back when we were doing it a lot more, we were using skills a lot more before, but you can see the overview of the skills is right there too. And then if it's in green and it's circled, of course, it means that you haven't responded. So that, that's my share. I love it. Now, because I was talking, I wasn't giving you a <laughs> I can I can go next. Okay. My elevator pitch is a short and sweet one, but... Okay. Um, I don't know, maybe a year and a half ago when I learned that I could be saving my activities by bookmark, changed my life and that I could bookmark multiple of them. And I, at my previous school, I think not many teachers knew about this because when we like came around again to the end of the year when we were remote learning and we needed to like reference things from the year before, um, it really helped because I had mine like organized by unit of inquiry and I could go in and I could, I could take a look. Um, and like my whole teaching team was like, what you can bookmark activities. Are you kidding me? <laughs> How do you, what do you know, mean that? Can you, can you... Like, like you create your own collections. That's what I mean. Like you like bookmark them to make your own collections. Ah, okay. Create collections. So right. I am saved by collections, um, constantly. Uh, when I was moving my accounts, I was worried that I wouldn't, my activities wouldn't transfer with my new account. Um, cause I know that that's been an issue for some ambassadors before. So I was able to like go in and like save like some links from my collection. Um, the only thing I wish uh, there's no way to like delete things that I have found. If anybody here knows, like if I accidentally make a typo, for example, and I like create a collection and it says, mm -hmm like health and there's like an E or something at the end, there's no way to delete that or edit it. So sometimes I have a few collections that are, 
that I shouldn't have because I've just made the mistake of like typing quickly. So I'd like, I'd love to be able to have access to like refine those and, and that kind of stuff. But anyway, I love collections. Cool. Do you use them as well? Does everybody use them? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, going to. Because <laughs> once you get like hundreds of things that are yours or that you've saved, like it's not possible. And I like, before I started using them, I would forget about really cool things that I had saved. So now they're like all, and you can put more than one bookmark on each one. So that's exactly like the best. reference them. Yeah. So like I have a collection of first, like first two weeks of school, but it's like things might be tagged with math or first two mm -hmm. weeks, or they might be this unit or that. And so, or like, if they, can and they, they show up on the activity as well, don't they? Yeah. yeah so the, kid, the kids know that's the thing I like. The kids know when oh. I'm doing reading and I'm doing writing. Oh, maybe I didn't know that. Yeah, I thought I think, only the folder yeah. views show up, but okay, cool. Uh, maybe, maybe it's just the folders I'm talking about. Yeah, but I like that so the kids know exactly what they're doing. Yeah. I put the link back to our uh, CISA document in, in our chat as well, if you wanted to reference that. If you don't want to, no worries. <laughs> yeah, and I think we can have, is it up to 100 collections as ambassadors maybe? I feel like 100 is the lucky number, so. It's a lot. It's more than I've needed. So <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Lifesaver. Cool. Uh, I'll go next. Is that okay? Please. <laughs> it's like awkward silence. Um, so for mine, <laughs> I know it. it's one of the updates. I was going to do progress, but you took that one. So my number two favorite thing is... Uh, the new update they added where when you are correcting or like looking at a student's work and you want to leave feedback in the past, like when you went in to edit it, when you finished, it bumped you all the way back to the yeah. beginning. So you had to yes. scroll down and go, you don't have to do that anymore. So when you click <laughs> edit, it opens a new window automatically. You can do everything you want to do. And when you save it, it automatically closes that window and puts you right back where you came from. Yeah. So it's a huge time saver for like giving yeah, I'm like, feedback yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Cause sometimes, I mean, I, I didn't do a lot of feedback just because it takes forever. So you have to pick and choose, but now I find like that was pretty recent. So like the very end of the school year, I was like going into everything and it just streamlined it all. So I really like that one. Yeah. I think I had three classes of writing projects in the old system yeah although it's niggly and it shouldn't take much time that time adds up so I'm, oh, I'm it does. like yeah very happy about that and it only I so I didn't get a chance to use it because we were out of school already but it's only available on the desktop correct it doesn't work on the iPad app as far as I know yes yeah. I usually use my computer so but worth it to get on your computer to do it totally <laughs> Okay, I'll go next. I, I kind of feel like the baby because I'm not I'm not a um an ambassador and, and it's all very new to me. So um I'm gonna share um one of the um um what do you call them the little workshops and things for the from the conference that I um uh, signed into the other day. And I'm really big on it sounds like you all are as well the self directed learning. I teach year six. So um, really trying to get the kids to um, take a lot more ownership and, um, you know, I'm, I'm not wanting to be having to follow up all the time. I expect them to be able to uh, know what there is to do and to, you know, work through a process. So I might be working with a group and there's no downtime because we all know what we've got to do and what to carry on with. So I saw, um, I was really interesting in, in looking at my reading program and, um, it's me who keeps using the word authenticity, which is what's been really exciting is to me, all the things that you have all been talking about is, has made Cecil seem a lot more, um, what's the word, authentic, sorry, <laughs> using it again. So I went to um, the workshop Enhancing Reading Instruction by Shannon, and I don't know how to say her last name, Discamps, it looks like. It was absolutely brilliant. I've spent the rest of the week completely overhauling all my activity. She had this, um, what she called a reading menu. Um, I've actually changed it to literacy and included my writing in it as well with, you know, the tick boxes and, 
she just had a whole range of really, really cool activities, book snaps. And, you know, some of the stuff we've done before, you know, when you see stuff and you go, yeah, I used to do that. Why don't I do that anymore? So it's just really kind of um, invigorated my whole reading program, given me some great new ideas. And I think it's going to be, you know, before I had a laminated sheet and they were ticking things off. Now it's all going to be on Seesaw. Um, they'll use a template and each week they'll update where they're up to and what they've got finished. And I can see, the parents can see, and they can see where they're up to. So, um, yeah, that's been really exciting. So. What was, sorry, what was the name of the course again? Enhancing Reading Instruction. And I think it was for grades four to six. Okay, yeah. Within yeah. CSR Connect. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. It was absolutely oh. just brilliant. And then I connected with her on LinkedIn and just sent her a message and said, oh my goodness, I've just, you know, um, spent the week, you know rethinking and redoing and setting up my seesaw page with everything all set to go so mm -hmm. i also put that into the notes just in case yeah cool i think i'm going to follow on from mary because i also did a really good course which i highly recommend and it's building creators not consumers and it's mainly for like independent reading but it could easily be adapted for maths and science and um, she goes through like four or five main activities and each one you're like, yes, yes, yes. So I'm pretty excited about implementing these and making them a lot more exciting. So using like animation and seesaw, so the kids are gonna animate, like retell a story, but there's no reason why you couldn't do it in science, explaining different scientific methods to, I know, plants and water, water cycle, um, chatter picks. She's got some really good stuff using chatter picks. So I think it will be really good for our second language learners as well. So we can do a lot of talking as well as using specific vocab and either going through different like language structures. So I, I was really impressed with that. And she very much addresses junior level, lower level junior teachers. So she makes it really clear on how you as a teacher use it, how the student uses it and everything. So yeah, I highly recommend that course and I'm excited to use that one, yeah. Excellent. Creating, uh, not consuming, you said? Uh, kind of building, of building creators, not consuming. Building creators. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. If we were to look into page 12 in the Seesaw Connect that I had just shared with everybody, uh, I put in a little review and then the today's conversation notes. Uh, and you'll see the, the notes that I just put about the elevator pitches. The, uh, the review were uh, items that we were supposed to have talked about last week, uh, last Tuesday, uh, except I think that we kind of glossed over them. And so I thought in review, we might look at it for a first time, but we might be reviewing it as well, because I think that we may have encapsulated a lot of it. And so I thought I could just uh, review and have a look with you. Uh, first of all, have we talked about ways that we, sh that we embed CSA in the classroom? Uh, we looked at examples, but have we really talked about that point uh, itself? And if not, do we want to talk about that? I mean, I think it's always nice to hear. Okay. Uh, did anybody want to start out? I could start out, but I, I don't want to always start out. <laughs> I'm just here picking everybody's brains. <laughs> So I'm, I'm happy to start up. When we were face-to-face, -face, uh, ways that we would embed CISA in the classroom, it was usually uh, we would have a morning circle time. And then we would, uh, of course, be writing things down. And we would say there might be a uh, task that's going on that runs in parallel or in tandem with uh, the major things that were going on. And they were usually in centers. So we only had a class of 24, but we still had four teachers all the time in the classroom. So it might be over into a center and we might say, okay, go over to there, work on the task that you're supposed to work on, uh, get that done. And then you can see how that would be embedded. Uh, and then you would go over and work on something that was more face-to-face uh, -face and hands-on. But that was one way that we would do it was through centers. Now things have changed completely because we're fully online. So our face-to-face uh, our -face is through Zoom with our class. 
And then we use CISA as our LMS, like I think most people are. And I showed last week, uh, Emily didn't see, but I showed last week how we, uh, we use like a landing page, the pinned activity as the, uh, or what you're gonna do for the day. And then on the next page was like the things that, uh, who, how you can contact people and stuff like that. So we used it almost as a, an LMS itself. So that's how we embedded it in the classroom. It was the classroom. Um, so I, I would say, um, cause we went, went through lots and lots of different learning models last year, as I'm sure many of you have, but pre COVID, um, the way that I used Seesaw was very much about, it was much more student led and, um, there was a lot more agency with the kids, like choosing what to post and how to post and what they want to showcase. And once a week, it, this was just part of a, like our school agreement is once a week, we would have a, a structured class post. So it would be for the same thing. So maybe it would be like a reflection or goal setting or anything of that nature. Um, I found that that changed a lot when we went online because the, when I was assigning activities, um, Seesaw became a much more teacher led tool. And that to me impacted even when we used it face to face because so we were on blended learning for the first like eight weeks last year. And so like on the days that we were off campus, it was all teacher led pretty much like here are activities. And then if we came back to campus, trying to get the kids to think about like what they wanted to post, what they, it just didn't work. I felt with the learning model, there was just too much time spent on like not authentic learning, right? You know, it was just very, it was, it was all about like, oh, getting things onto the platform. So pretty much throughout the whole year, it, the way that I try, we tried to adapt it is I had kids use hashtags a lot, something that I wish so much that Seesaw could aggregate by. So when they would post something, there might be an activity that I would assign, maybe it would be in person, maybe it would be online because we, I was trying not to associate activities with just only distance learning. But if they were doing goal setting or they were doing reflecting, then I asked them to really start to create their own hashtags. So some kids use like the learner profile, some kids maybe did like an, a learning skill, or if it was, um, if they were using a, a rubric to assess their thinking, they maybe would like hashtag it with what they felt their solo taxonomy level was, because I use the solo taxonomy quite a bit. So that was just kind of a way that I was trying to help the kids take a little bit of ownership about when they created their own Seesaw posts. And a lot in my, in my class, often there's um, joint posting. There was a, like, if we were in person or even sometimes if we were off campus and kids were um, maybe tackling activities together, I would encourage them to um, tag the, the students that they were working with in their activities. Cause that also really helped me see okay, they, these are partners and they were doing this together, or a group of three or students that preferred to um, share independently. So that was just, those are just some of the ways. Sorry, maybe I didn't explain enough in detail, but I just gave a lot that of- makes sense things. to me, but if anybody else has questions. <laughs> but, so, and then like, at the beginning of the year, we kind of decide on the folders that we wanted as a class. It's like, so what folders are going to be important to us? Oh, we're starting our next unit. What would be really good folders to have? So just kind of helping the kids create that system a little bit. I do have a question when you talk about hashtags. How, how did you use that? Like what, how did that work? So in the comments and like the, the okay. commenting feature where they are adding a comment to their, um, to their post. Mm -hmm. And that was a really big, um, a big transition. Cause I, so I taught grade five and when they came from grade four, a lot of them were given like sentence starters for their commenting and like editing. And so they, I would say almost the majority of all my students didn't know. They're like, oh, if my teacher didn't tell me like, what am I commenting about? Like, I don't like, what am I going to put there? You know, it's like today I learned this, 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 or one thing I'm thinking about and EAL like language learners definitely still needed that. But, um, uh, that's something that I found was really helpful in the, like with the sample student, like in the directions of an activity, I would say, if you want a hint or you want to see an example, go to sample student. Mm -hmm. So instead of in the, like the post or the template that all students would get, 
and me providing that scaffold because it's kind of hard to take it away. I would go in on the day of and like make a post as the sample student. And so if kids needed to, they could go to sample student and see, oh, that's how I could craft my, uh, my comment or that's how I could add details. But yeah, like, and some kids have like three or four hashtags. Um, you know, sometimes I just said, what, what did you feel like was your biggest strength or, you know, the learner profile attribute that you were showing the most in your learning today in math. So they might say, you know, like hashtag problem solver, hashtag communicator, something like that. I love that idea. Thank you. <laughs> Again, you can't like click and find, you know, you can't. Right, sort. right, right. But in the moment, I think you can you can see it. Yeah. I think I shared last week how I embedded it in person with the seesaw passwords, which I took off um, Twinkle. And then they go out of the drawer of their picture or print out their class photos. And then each week, because it was always a trip to the ICT room and we were limited with bad headphones and no camera or microphone. Um, so I'd have to set up different activities, but then the homework that day would be to go home and record either an audio or a video about whatever task we did. Um, I was always worried we would go back into lockdown. So initially it was a lot of kind of training using different activities from drag and drop, writing, drawing, um, which definitely helped when we did end up going back online. But they get their boarding pass, so I kind of show them. They'd always have more than one activity to do. I would suggest maybe an order, maybe start easy, go slightly harder. Um, and then they would we'd get up and then you'd kind of take it as an entrance ticket so they could keep their stump and you would take the main bit. And they really liked that because they would collect all their stumps and you can either put a stamp in their passport. Um, and it's something they can also like take home and tell mom and dad, like, look what we did today. Or, you know, they've got a rough idea of what they did in class to then mm. do at home. But they loved it. It was kind of, it is a bit gimmicky, but they really did enjoy it. And then later on with their homework book, they do flashback Friday. So they have to tell me um, the hardest thing they had to do in school, where they have to focus really hard on the work they're most proud of. And it can be in any class, not just mine. And then eventually I was given out like, because on a Friday we do kind of not, not always student of the week, but shout outs. And then on the Monday to start the week, I would introduce like wow and pal cards for like, the best video or a cool reflection, which encouraged them to then get on to see throughout the weekend. So they kind of, and if they, with their permission, show it to the class, which most of the time they're like, yeah, show everyone. So um, yeah, those those worked really well for me. They, they just kind of loved it. And with grade three, not losing um, a card this big is pretty impressive for like a whole term. Um, <laughs> clinging on to it, always putting it away. Um, so yeah, they were really proud of their kind of seesaw pass, passports and boarding passes, which was cool. Yeah. Cool. It's nice to hear things again, even if we said it last week. Uh, a, Emily's here and she hasn't really heard. Uh, but B, sometimes when we tell it again, even telling it again, we listen to it with a new perspective. And sometimes you tell mm -hmm. a little bit more than what you've uh, told last week. So it's always interesting to hear it again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the next item was, tell us your favorite activity to launch your students into CESA. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm happy to start because I knew what was coming. <laughs> and uh, so one of my favorite ones is just to get to know you. And, and it's just kind of... Uh, you have they have to go around and this is when it, this works well when it's face to face and they just have to it's like the student scavenger hunt go find somebody who's been to africa go find somebody who's uh plays golf go find somebody who's da 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 so they have to ask each other they take the picture and they put that picture in there that's one of my favorite ones just to start kids and it's really easy you can play music in the background they're running around they're using seesaw figuring out how the camera works and talking to kids that they wouldn't necessarily talk to that you did this face-to-face? -face? That was face-to-face, -face, yeah. That was one of the first activities we did. And they just like kept track on Seesaw? They, well, they all walked around. Uh, they all had their own iPads. Mm -hmm. And then they were just walking around the classroom, walking up to Timmy and saying, Timmy, do you play golf? Do you play, oh, can I take a picture? Okay, and then they would put that into the, I think okay. there's, 
uh, if you search in the activities, uh, get type get to know you activity, and there's probably a template right there. I'm just wondering how could that transfer to distance learning? How could could it? Huh. Like find something and take a picture of it. You could do it like bingo or a certain sheet where they've got a. Yeah. I mean, or, they could, or they could have maybe like they post something about themselves. Like maybe there's like an interview sheet that the first day and then the second day is where they get to go into others posts and try to find information because then they're going back and taking a look at what other people have posted and kind of getting into that habit of checking in the journal mm -hmm. fee. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. I, did, I, I started yeah, the year well. with a three, two, one thinking routine. Um, just very like, just, you know, low, low floor, but like three things that you're interested in for, um, in fifth grade, uh, two thing, two questions that you have about it, right. One worry. And, um, I just, I don't make it private or I don't make it public. So it's just something that, that comes to me. So that way the whole, the class didn't see it. But then I took a few things that we had adapted um, it like we had done in person and did it online. And actually I thought it worked better with Seesaw and at home. We did, um, you know, all about like, all about me, like my, my, myself in numbers. And so it was really open. It was just represent yourself in as many different ways mathematically that you can. So it wasn't like a worksheet or anything where it's like, you know, make a graph of your favorite foods, but it was think about all of the ways that math is in your life. How could you teach about yourself? And I think some kids worked on it for like two days, three days. They, at home, they created like pages. So they were off the device and they like were drawing on paper, but they took pictures of it and posted it on Seesaw. And I, I had like an example, but then I also really got to see kind of like, you know, where their creativity was, what they were thinking. Um, some kids like made line graphs to show like my reading over the summer, like it was high in January or July, low in August. Like it was, it was really cool. I would love it if you were able to <clears throat> uh, post a few of those examples in here and make it anonymous if you can, but then I would love to see that. I have no access to my class. Oh, I thought you said I have a couple examples. <laughs> You know, no, no, no. Like I had, sorry, yeah, like I didn't save any. At Yokohama. Yeah. But also like we archive our classes at the end of the year. Right. Okay. Oh, I have the, I have the example of the activity though. So I can share that. Okay. That'd be great. Um, I want, I, I don't want to cut anybody off if you're like sh jumping to, but I want to add on to uh, something that we did that was so powerful. Uh, midway through the year, we had noticed that a lot of kids were having problems with uh, friendship groups. And so at one point, I took every kid's face and I randomized them all over the place into a template. And I shared it to all the kids. And we had, we have massive classrooms, like massive. Um, and so we had the kids sit really far away from one another. So they weren't next to each other. And we said, just put your friends, put the friendship groups together. And you can circle around and explain who everybody was. And then we didn't, we didn't let the kids see the answers. We didn't publish them, but it was so telling to be able to see who like were outlier kids or who thought that they were friends with everybody, but they, that group didn't think that they were friends with everybody. And it was just really, really interesting to look because we have on Wednesdays, we just talk about four new kids every week. So we get really deep, uh, conversations and observations about only four kids a week when we rotate through every Wednesday and so this was really interesting as a data point to because we have the counselors come and we have everybody just looking at the kids and going okay blah 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 and so just trying that uh, would be very helpful I, I wouldn't do that at the beginning because they might not know one another but midway through the year to to do that it, it's always it, it, I'm going to do it again this year just to see what happens mm -hmm. Sorry, back to anybody else. <laughs> Favorite activity. Oh, that, that's also like making me think about what you could do at the very beginning of the year, like with pictures, because kids could even talk about, like they could sort, you know, students that I know, students that I've worked well with, students that I, like that I don't know. I mean, you could do a lot like that, but then it, I'm guessing you kept yours private. It wasn't like public in the. Yeah, we just, 
we kept it totally private and then looked at it later on when we were talking about the kids. And, and I highly recommend doing that as well, is dedicating some time. So we would only say for an hour, we're going to talk about these four kids. And then next week, we're going to talk about four other kids next week. And that way we weren't missing any kids because I, I remember one of the keynote speakers was talking about the middle student because mm -hmm. teachers often talk about the high students and they definitely talk about those problem kids, but it's those middle kids that you have to worry about because like at the end of the year, you go, hey, and how is Johnny? And it's like, well, Johnny just does everything and he does it, but I don't know him <laughs> as the student because I've never really concentrated on. So we made a conscious effort to go through and keep coming back to all the kids, which made all the, the middle kids. It's like, okay, yeah, da, da, da. what is Johnny doing? Other favorite activities to launch your students in CESA or do we wanna move on? I just found when I, I came, the kids obviously knew way more about CESA than I did already. And they were like, I'd be like, how do I do this? And someone would come and show me, which was, um, which was really cool. It was obvious that, you know, the school and the, the other teachers had spent a lot of time making sure they were um, really well set up for that. I guess one of the things that goes through my head, and maybe a slightly off topic, is um, I love having a vibrant classroom. The kids are publishing their things in the classroom as well, so it can be, can be seen in there. And I wonder if any of you, I know you're not in classrooms now, but looking back when you were in the classroom, whether you find... Um, doing so much on seesaw means that there's not so much, um, you know, that's that's up in the classroom. Or do you print things off and put them in? Or do you know what I mean? Like, I, I like the classroom mm -hmm. to be vibrant and also, you know, and also the, the messy side, the the work that they're doing, the group work, the um, planning and the organising, but also, you know, sort of. Um, showing them as authors where people walking past, even parents who come around to visit the school or, you know, the principal or whoever pops in, you know, that they're, that they're published and they're on display. Do you do both or what do you, sorry, am I off? I'm probably a bit off topic, but it's just sort of something that, that struck me. The more that I'm doing um, in Seesaw, which I think is great, the less I can see is probably going to be evident in the classroom itself. What, what I did, like when we had big projects and stuff and we would have like the summary was in Seesaw. So, um, you know, there were like videos of when they were working on it. It was like a whole collection of their things. So to like share that, we just put a display and we had the QR code because each post has a unique QR code. So I just printed the QR code and then the kids' names underneath it and it was all shared. And so we, we had like a... I don't know what you call it, where you share your best work with other grades and stuff. And so there was like a hallway parade where you can go and see what other classes did. And so for ours, we just had the card of iPads there and people were like clicking and looking at the different stuff that we did. So that's one way that that you can do it. But yeah. I also think too, that's very like what you're saying though, to me is can be a slippery slope. So if I find myself where like we are face to face and most things are on seesaw. Like to me, I'm like, that's not, you, you know, like I, I kind of want to back, back it up a little bit or flip, flip it and make seesaw much more about process. So that way, if there is like a published writing piece or if there's anything that you want out and displayed for other people, like, of course that could be taken, you can take a photo or kids can upload that to seesaw after the fact. But like I, from, I try to tend to really make it much more of a process tool in the classroom um, as much as possible face-to-face. -face. So, you know, how's it going? Checking in, here's what I'm working on. I've got two goals or I'm gonna put this here and I'm gonna get feedback from two other classmates that are gonna respond onto my seesaw or something like that. Um, that that's yes. just- And I recently did the writing project which was not meant to be done on seesaw, but was, but technically in a way, I'm glad we're not going back to school because I kind of promised that I'd print them all out and they were going to do like in pizza boxes. So I got all these pizza boxes. So they're meant to be writing about their past, present and future. So it's like pizza slices of their past. Um, I've got what was the middle part, I can't remember now. Um, and then there was like a window, we used the top of the window into their future um, and things about the present, like who they are now. Um, but you can, 
I thought I'm going to have to scrap all this idea, but it actually worked that way. And if I went back, they could easily, or they can print them out and just give them a pizza box and they can display it that way. Because kids do like to see it on screen, but in, in the class as well. So I think there are yeah. ways you can do it. And it kind of just shows the process. So we're talk, writing about the past, using the present tense and then the future. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just looking out. My, my wife, I think, is bringing everything inside because it's starting to rain. <laughs> One second, let me just see. <laughs> Do you need to bring stuff inside? Yeah, I think, I mean, you can print off the QR codes too, like, like Heidi said, and it can be there, like if it's an interactive area. I tried to do something like that with kind of a mentor chart to remind kids of like, here's, oh, here's something that you had said on Seesaw when you were looking at mentor text of... <sighs> A craft move that you wanted to try but honestly it didn't work very well because right. for the kids to have the agency to like go to the chart scan the qr code then to go find mm -hmm. that response that activity it was just too far removed yeah. so like my there was a lot of work on my end that didn't pan like didn't pay off <laughs> yeah yeah ours because i've tried it like you said and you're right it doesn't work because it just gets complicated ours worked only because we were the only one that had our display like that all the other classes had like their you know their writing samples out and all this other stuff so it made us like unique and it did work for like a good I think that's the cool thing about Seesaw right like it's so adaptable to whatever your circumstances are so you can achieve the same results like a variety of different ways and it just depends sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't yeah you can display a wall and kind of have a call to action like go to yeah. Seesaw and check out part two or something like that mm -hmm. it's kind of a cool yeah, especially for parents, I think. Yeah. The next question was, what has been your most successful getting started activity with your students? I would change that to what has been your most successful activity, CISA activity with your students. Has there been an activity that you're like, this is the best? I'm going to take out the getting started part. Um, and maybe not activity, but I, I think structure. So like I found the sweet spot to be like three to five slides, like with students. And so trying to break things apart on, on, on slides, it took that, I mean, I feel like that took so much trial and error last year, but like our, cause I teach grade five. And if you wanted something to extend like multiple days, it felt like there was a lot that needed to go into an activities direction. And it was too challenging. Kids were on iPads. If they click view instruction, it like takes up their whole screen and it just, is it really clunky? So we started to like put the instructions on like each slide, like part one, part two, or like, you know, you know, this, that, and then like having a rubric like on another slide that kids could like take a screenshot of and like annotate. I just think that, and I think when the Seesaw update where you could have like multiple links on a slide or multiple like links within an activity really helped that. But that's what I found that most, um, that like most of the activities that were successful had and definitely like voice, voice option recorded of instructions for kids and any like pictures for them to reference. Um, it was, was really helpful. And then if I needed, like, we'd always have like one or two, my teaching team, like we always would have one or two slides at the end and one would say level up. And so if there was something that students wanted to do to extend their thinking, they could do that or like helpful charts. And there might be like a picture of a chart from the classroom or a picture of, of, of something. So there was just like within the slides mm. it was, that, that was, I think the most but like if it's over five slides it was lost too too challenging mm -hmm. um i i had said last week that uh with the younger kids that i put we broke everything apart to one slide because kids didn't want to click onto that second slide <laughs> uh, but yeah i can see how if you do you almost you almost have to judge your class and go which kids are ready for which ones like these kids mm -hmm. will go into the third and fourth slide and then you might have the ones that you know and you're going to just tag only those kids to get that activity uh that it's just like okay they're only going to get one slide because they'll have that easy win as well and i love the level up and helpful charts in the slide that's fantastic 
any other most successful activities with your students? Um, I've had a couple, I kind of like doing the virtual field trips. So we do like a library week. And then one of the favorite ones, which a lot of my kids are talking about, we read like Mousetronaut and there's, you can link it through to, I think the author's brother who's actually in space reading the book to the kids. So they're like reading the story and it's read by an astronaut in space. And then I made like a drag and drop. And then they were doing kind of sequencing. So first, next, then. And then at the end, they have to tell me what's the kind of the heart, what's the meaning of the story, what's the main kind of message. And then second, I think I actually, I, before we did that, we did a little mini trip going to the edge of space and they had to write down what they could see and how they felt. And then they did that activity and then they kind of went back to the other activity and to see if they could level up their adjectives and like description words. Um, but again, they got like their boarding pass going to space and everything. They were like, they loved it. But I've also found you can do things like we do like roll a word of vocabulary, vocabulary work and we can, you can recreate dice and stuff like that into the CSP activities. And that's really, really helpful. Or like, would you rather questions you can kind of game it up a bit, which I find my kids kids mm. enjoy. They just have to play and pause um, on, on a little video that comes up. Um, and I know what you mean about reading instructions. So things like that, they're simple. They kind of, they know to hit play, hit pause, and then answer the question or follow number two pretty well. So I find those kind of pretty cool as well. Yeah. I love the would you rather. It's funny because I did that two years ago. And I just found a whole bunch of my slides from two years ago. And I'm like, oh, yeah, would you rather? And those are great math ones. Uh, you could probably just search that online. Would you rather math for grade three, four, or five? And there's so many there. And say, like, why? And then you have to explain your thinking, right? Rather than, yeah, just this one. But why? <laughs> OK. Yeah, yeah. And quite, and quite these dice as well. I think for like just stuff like gratitude and stuff like caught being kind you can create a whole load of decks and they have to hit play hit pause and then like go and do that act do you know what I mean I mean some kids will keep hitting play until they get the um the card maybe they want so it could be like help your mom in the kitchen tidy your room make a card for someone tell them a joke and then they have to come back and report back and that's just trying to create some sort of community but my kids have actually because it's a bit of a game as well. They can go off and do it and they can take a photo, write a sentence about it or make a little video about it. And they really enjoy stuff like that. And it's got that choice as well. So how do you- And what's that called? Them? Something nice? Caught being kind. I, I call them caught being kind. No, um, act of kindness. Sorry, random act of kindness. Mm. Uh, sorry, the badge I give them. So that's, that's uh, something I have in my classroom. If I see kids sharing and if they give a nice comment, they get a caught being kind badge. So just like if they're being really positive or something like that, they might they'll get an award and normally a message home to mum and dad saying your child was did this awesome thing in class today, just to promote um kind of community. But um so the thing I was talking about was like um random acts of kindness. So it's just something, especially when they're online, because it can be something help your big sister, your little sister your gran or something like that. And it, it's just something they can easily do, but like report back in, in other ways, which is kind of fun. Cool. Virtual field trips, the way to structure things. Would you rather random acts of kindness? Nice, nice. Okay, any other, any others? Otherwise we're gonna move on to today's conversation and we've only got about 11 minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so today's conversation was, I, I think it's interesting because I wonder if people were having a lot of problems with this, uh, and CISA has asked us to talk about how we connect families and I added and engage with them. Um, and did, did any of you find that connecting families to CISA was difficult because I, I, at my school, I found that as soon as somebody heard about it, the families wanted to be on it and they were on it like the next day. That wasn't a an issue uh, I would say that in like remote learning if I mean when my students would have multiple activities a day many many parents just turned off notifications so like while engagement maybe started high 
they were just, and if they had multiple children and they were just kind of bombarded and they were honest, they were like, no, I've, I've turned off notifications. So I really saw a decline of like parents, even like reading and accessing and seeing their child's posts, um, the commenting on it. I think a lot of parents who, if English wasn't their first language, were very, very hesitant to comment onto their child's mm. posts. Even though they could be commenting in Japanese, still it was very, um, I think it was a area of discomfort. So I think it's hard to gauge the level of engagement. Like, I don't know what's being talked about at the dinner table or anything like that, but the evidence of it on Seesaw was hard. I think Seesaw is kind of like anything else, really. It's it's like anything that you engage with families with. If you run a workshop at school um, or have the trip, you know, the thing where parents can come in to see what's happening with the trip or anything like that, you get the same people every time that engage. So I, I noticed that I had regulars that would um, engage with it. Um, and, um, yeah, it just... It's quite a tricky one because some people, it doesn't matter. Like I had one mother actually complain and say, what's the seesaw rubbish? I don't want to, you know, like, can you, you know, like, I don't want to see. I don't, I don't want to, like, I'm not interested in looking at what my kids are doing and you think, oh, well, you know, you're never going to engage someone like that. It's not that she didn't care. She was pretty quick if she wasn't happy about something. But, um, yeah, she just wasn't interested in that as a platform for whatever reason. So, um yeah, I think there's sort of, there's some parents that it doesn't matter what you do, they, they, they won't engage with it, they, for whatever reason, um, but I just seem to get the same ones pretty much every time, and they were pretty regular and quite often were commenting or at least, you know, ticking the little, putting on the little heart or whatever. In your schools though, is it your school promoting Seesaw? Because in my school it's just, I've had to do it kind of by myself, so that's been a challenge, like if it was like, really school backed and I think it's going to be this year um but initially it was something I was kind of doing off my own so that's kind of hard to do um but in Vietnam I know that um Emily you're now in Vietnam there will be a parent group but there will be a leader parent in every class um top tip get them on board because they will come to all the complaints to you but you need, they, they normally elect them quite openly at the beginning of school term. And there can sometimes be big fallouts for whose parent, which parents in charge, and they can get um, actually voted out. Um, but find out who that person is. Yeah, find out who that person is. They will be your biggest ally. So one of my parents from last year, um, I'm in the process of trying to get her to do a little mini video just to explain why she liked Seesaw and do it in Vietnamese, which I'm hopefully going to share. With all I my think parents. what you just said is key, like having parents talk to other parents about it, or even if parents would be willing to lead like a little mm. workshops or make videos, that would be awesome. Mm. I'm writing that down. Yeah, but like in, in Vietnam, in any school, whether it's primary, adults, there's, there's a, a representative and they kind of report everything. But in parents here, I know normally if we were in school, they would, they would tell the school which is the parent representative for each class. Uh, okay. That's a pretty common thing here so find out who they are and um become friends because <laughs> they will they will normally be quite engaged and they can help you promote and encourage and will share things I, I don't need. think that's just Vietnam because I experienced that in China and I've just started talking with my co-teacher this year and she was talking about we need to be talking to this one parent because so I think that it I don't know if that's an Asian thing or if that's just a thing Mm. But uh, if we're hearing this and we're in Brunei or Thailand, I think that's, let's take heed to that advice. I think the nice. getting parents to like, also talk about how they've used it for other parents to hear, like that's so important. Yes, yeah, so I found out that she was posting stuff on her Facebook about feedback and stuff like that and super proud, which she really loved it. So I'm in the really? process of trying to, find her to ask her if she'll do a little ex explaining about the difference between class and family and just some things she likes and then I'm trying to come up with a decent routine so maybe I'll do an announcement every Monday and a roundup every Friday for parents and then they can just check their work 
or maybe add into my feedback, like show your mum or show your dad or show your auntie. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess the trick with that question as a whole is actually what is the benchmark of, of parent engagement? Like what, we, how do we know that we've been successful in engaging with parents in terms of like almost like data? Because, you know, like I, I felt like I probably had a, really, a, a fairly decent number of my parents connecting. It certainly wasn't all of them, but how do you sort of benchmark that? How do you, how do you sort of say, hey, I feel pretty good. This, I've got 75% of my parents. Are we happy with 50% of our parents engaging it? Actually having, a, a, almost having a, a number to aim for or a, a something to aim for. Um, do you know what I mean? Like when we yeah. say, oh, you know, how are we engaging with parents? But, but what would we actually expect that to be in, 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 the, in the real world, if you know what I mean? But that's one thing I like about Seesaw is the fact that there's not just, it's not limited to one parent or two parents. Like you can actually add quite a lot of people to one student's class, which I know, especially with online learning, I know a lot of my kids won't be at home. They might be at granddad's, grandpa's, their aunties, aunties, cousin's house. So that's something I, I will be trying to check who wants to be added to the class. But with I look have a day. I mean, yeah. When we yeah. Sorry. With, with that, when we started saying hey uh to the parents, get their grandparents on. The grandparents uh were often the most uh, active because they're retired and at home. And so we found that the grandparents were really good. Um going back to the question about engagement, when when we would send out just for example messages to families. Uh, and then you can see who's responded or who's looked at it, sorry, uh, seen by. Uh, when we noticed that there were trends that so-and-so is never looking, we would make a conscious effort to contact them a different way and say, hi, uh, not that we noticed that you're not <laughs> reading messages. Hi, have you checked these things? And we wanted to talk with you specifically. So we would do one-to-one -one, uh, calls and not call them out, but just be like, how how is so and so doing? Uh, what's going on? Really, more just asking them about their home situation, and then referring them again to CISA. I th yeah, hearing you say that makes me think too, and I don't know how successful it would be, but I mean, I'd much rather have parents have like an authentic conversation with their kids in person if it's something that they saw on seesaw and like never comment on it in if right for me to see it like if I had to choose. So I'm just thinking like maybe. I don't think I've ever surveyed or even asked parents, like, how are you, like, you know, like, how often do you check your child's seesaw or, you know, when you, when you watch seesaw or open it, what are you, what is the first thing that you notice? Like, I've never really asked parents that. No, we, well, we, we never did that. That's not what I mean. I mean, when we would look, so I look at, I, I love data. And when we look at, uh, say, the beginning of the year and you look at the messages that are being read because you can see seen by, seen by, seen by, and I would start to uh, tally those and look through and then go, okay, you know, Johnny's parents have uh, looked at the first message and then never looked at any for the past eight months. I think yeah. we need to check, uh, check with Johnny's parents just to see how things are going. Uh, but not, not really referencing CSA, more referencing how are things going in life? Uh, and what, what's going on and the conversations would be very mindful about that not not accusatory or not not really not not data gathering in that way much more qualitative yeah I, I found I stole something from another international school and it's got like 10 great things to start conversations with your kids about learning so like sharing something you found difficult or something and got that translated and we kind of pushed that out and I generally ask my parents to at least like their kids' work so they don't need to leave a comment, but just giving it that heart, well, your kid will later see that you've seen it, you've acknowledged it, and then the kid will probably start a conversation about it, I find. So just like, at least go on and heart, heart their thing, because that's pretty easy to do even if you're at work. You can say, I've seen it, heart it, and then, you know, I find the child will be like, what did you think about my work? Um, as we know, some parents are very critical about their kids, even when they're eight years old. Um, 
So I find this one thing I just, I'm going to try and break it down and maybe hand it out at the beginning of the year, but maybe on my Friday roundup or my Monday, say maybe try this question this week or this conversation started this week, if it can work with what we're doing. But I don't know. It's just going to be um, trial and error, I think. <laughs> just, um, I'll share that document though, once I find it on my drive. Yeah. If you can put it into this this document, that would be great. Yeah. And I'm just putting in the uh, the things that Emily has shared. I'm just putting them into this document as well. Just so if anybody oh, sorry, wants to I could have, done, I could have just done that one. <laughs> That's okay. okay. It's done. It's there. Uh, cool. But cool. I do think, like, I I was thinking that I would somehow maybe not necessarily having an extra survey, but if there if there's a way, like whenever I get like I always survey parents at the beginning of the year about their child, but if I just even tossed in like one question, like what was most helpful for you with Seesaw last year? Like, I mean, I know it's different if they haven't used Seesaw with any of their previous classes or yeah, I guess if they haven't ever used it, I maybe would just say, you know. A lot of our parents were just getting very tired because they were getting loads of apps and places to go thrown at them. And I think for them, it was too much. So I, I'm hoping this year we've kind of we're using Microsoft Teams, but at least I can put links into their classroom there off everything. And then I made an end of year newsletter using, is it Geniali? Where you can make a one stop that can click, click into loads of other stuff. I can share that, but it was easy to make, but it was just one thing for my parents. I find that my parents have to open up more than one thing they won't. That's, That's true. Like, yeah, no, yeah. If I have to open up more than one thing, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like not just parents. I'm like, you want me to log into a portal and find five different links? Uh. I'm just being mindful yeah, of the time. It's seven o two. Some of these other the, the other three questions were very uh, similar. Like, what are some tips and tricks you have used in the past to connect and engage with? I think we've been answering that. What help do others need to be successful with family connections? And how does your school or district help? support connections and engagements using CISA. Were there any of these that were really, really popping out that we need to talk about? Otherwise, I'm just, uh, we're going into an hour, past an hour right now. I, I uh, have heard a couple people say that they would like to share some things. And if you do and can put those into the document, that would be great. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just remind everybody that next, our next meeting is not until September, 20th is what we have decided as a group that should give us some time to really start using all the new things that CISA has done and all the things that we've learned from our activities. And let me just share the screen one more time if that's okay. And then, yeah. Can I just ask one question? I know Mary shared one course she's done. Is anyone, and I know Heidi, you shared a course last week. Has anyone else done any other courses you'd recommend on the Seesaw Connect? Not. Okay. I'm looking at doing some more this week, but I um I decided not to make the mistake that I normally do. You know, when you go to a, if you're in person for real and you go to a conference, you're bombarded with all these great ideas and you come away buzzing, and about ninety percent of it you never do because you just get caught up in. <laughs> You know everything else when you're back in the room and I started doing that because after Thomas mentioned that gamification one I thought oh man I'm, I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a piece of that but I just watched the enhancing reading one and I had all these cool ideas and I was just about to hit click on the video and I went do you know what I'm actually gonna stop and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna pull this apart and actually do something with it and I think that was incredibly powerful and it was such a lesson it's such a dumb thing but it was such a lesson of instead of just like yeah and that's really cool and that's really cool and that's really cool and the things that you guys were all saying last week yeah. and I've written them all down but actually making myself stop and do something with them so um yeah so I haven't done any others simply because I just spent the week actually doing something useful with the excitement that I got from that mm -hmm. cool. yeah. that's impactful though and was, adding, yeah. adding to that, we have just decided in our class to make sure that when in our online learning that we're building in time after every class for exactly that. 
So it's like mm. where our class might've been an hour, we're saying, no, it has to be 20 minutes of teaching time and it has to be, okay, now you've got like 40 minutes of due time and maybe a little check-in at the end. So it's, it's funny that you say that for yourself. Why are we not doing that for the kids too? <laughs> mm. uh, but back to that question, did anybody else see any other uh, things that could take us down those fun alleyways of uh, learning? Okay. <laughs> if not, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna share this last, uh, last slide then. Uh, wrap up some reminders. So before next session, consider how successful you have been with getting students started, creating routines and connecting and engaging with families and others with CESA. Uh, you will receive a participate, participation certificate from CESA, and there will be the same participation link for feedback in an email at 7.30 today. If you have filled in it already, no, don't disregard this email. <laughs> Sorry. Go back to it because oh, more opens up. Uh, the link will close on October 15th, 2021 at the end of the day. Uh, the link is the only way to access the participation certificate. And some of you had problems with uh, opening the link. I hope it all got sorted out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if not, thank you again. <laughs> I, I keep learning so much from all of y'all. <laughs> it's really nice. And I hope that everybody has a, a good smooth transition and eventually we're all face to face again. <laughs> Except Maybe. you, Hannah, I know you like to work online. <laughs> no, I like being face to face. It's just different when you've been teaching for a while, but um, yeah, pros and cons. Um, it, it might be nice to back know. into class though afterwards, you know. I do, yeah. I do wonder just how this COVID and everything is going to affect these young kids long term. Like they're scared of germs. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm worried I won't be able to recognize them because I'll see their faces and I'll go back to school and they'll be covered up. And then yeah. like, you don't know who I am. It's um, yeah, it'll be strange, especially there's lots of new kids as well, which I think we might get. So, mm. yeah. is there a way to get a link to each of our like activity libraries, and like maybe attach that onto the Google Doc, like next to our names? Because you know how are you how you can like follow and and like see different teachers if they have activities in the community library. Is there a wink, a way to do that? How about- Well, I'm, I know? feel like there is, but I'm just curious if anyone knows, like to find like my name on Seesaw would be, e let me see. E I, you, like I, I have a question about your name actually, Emily. <laughs> Are you uh, working on your PhD? No. Oh, okay. Not yet. Not yet. When you search your name, there's an Emily Graves that's a, a PhD candidate. What is uh, their PhD in? Maybe then I'll say yes. I <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I was like, like oh, I wonder because if, be like, yes. If like, I'm just I'm really curious. If I put this link in the chat, is anybody able to click on it and see my library? But we'll put it put it onto the document. If well, I just don't know if it works. Okay, let's see. Well, I'm just curious because I think it does not work that way. If you go into your community library, like the where it has the list of all the stuff yeah. that you've published, there's like three dots and one says edit and one says share. In the community? Your section? link. Your, your link. Your, to my, your my part library. of the community library. Okay, hang on. I'm just curious. So like if you're in my library, you click on your icon in the top right. Okay. which is and then when that'll bring up your library that you've shared and then there's three dots in there so i don't have an icon in the top right like with an initial or a circle no not anymore oh. i wonder if it's because i don't have a class I that's what know. i got i don't know if that works for mine i don't know i just that's something that would be like if that works like I only have I just one. Want to tidy some published, I got so from I don't Hannah's. Know I need to share, yeah. but Hannah has a lot, right? So I think it's yes, and I had shared Hannah's before. So yes, there is so a way. this is exactly what I'm looking for. Yes, thank you, Hannah. Thank you. I think it's um yeah, like Heidi said, the three dots below your picture. 
Yeah, I don't have my picture or any of that good stuff in my account. Probably my just three, switched. It should come under your name. My, my three dots are gone. I'm going to refresh because they were there. Yeah, way. like I don't have my name or anything, but that's, I think, I don't know what's going on. But I just think that's, it's kind of nice to have that. Hmm. So maybe like, let me do this. Here, I'll delete this because that's. Three dots under your name where? Who can share their screen? Can, can you share your screen, Hannah? You show what you're talking about. And okay. Hannah, in the meeting Hannah. notes, I hyperlinked your name to your library. Hmm? So that's what that is. Okay. Hi, you, Eddie. I can't share. No. Um, no. Oh, no, and let me check. Sorry. I'm, I'm doing one thing. Now. I think I can, yeah. Uh -huh. um, share. Yeah. Yeah, like that's awesome. I just need to be able to figure out how to get there. So I came from. Uh, today. What am I doing now? I'm just doing silly stuff now. Um, so I was in my library and then where I've. That's one thing I love about Seesaw is that you can just steal everybody's great work. Um, and then my icon is just behind people. Let me see. Um, here and then, and then it was the, these three dots here. Then it's share. That's what Heidi said. Yeah. And copy. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. I don't think I have, I don't have an icon. It's interesting. Is it maybe a Seesaw for Schools versus a free version? Or, or it might be that she's already shared to community. And so those are uh, items that have been, activities that have been shared to the community already. And so now it can be shared again, maybe. But I don't see that either. Oh, weird. Well, that's what I am wondering because I am Seesaw for Schools oh. and Hannah, I think you are not Seesaw for Schools, probably. Oh, no, no. But then Tom, that's the ones that have been published, I think, to the community library. Yeah. I don't yeah. think you can yeah. share your personal library. I don't think you no. can share that. And new ones that have been published. Yeah. Which I have published some, but that's interesting, but uh, maybe not from this account. That's why. That is why. I think that's exactly why. If you put in you that you have, you have a new email, that. all your stuff will travel with you. Like you don't lose yeah. your stuff. It should, but when I say like share to like my school library, like it's different, right? Mm -hmm. Sharing to the community library is not different though. That should be the same. But, but I think you can retrieve stuff. I think now you can make sure if you change schools, you don't lose any of your stuff you've yeah, created. Yeah, you definitely don't. You I changed schools last year and everything followed yeah. me. What, really? Yeah, if yeah. you go into so you that, can, you can... Uh, that, that page where you can access your ambassador tools, one of the tools is to change mm. your email. And if you change your email, everything from your previous email stays with you at your new email. You don't lose anything. Really? Okay, yeah. what, I wonder what happens if I have, because now I have two major accounts from my last school and from this one. <laughs> <laughs> so they merge together. I think you would Imagine, probably have yeah. to ask them, but yes, they can do that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, because I've created a ton from my last school. Mm -hmm. Hi, you, Eddie. <laughs> we, we are just wrapping up our meeting today. And our, our next meeting is going to be September 20th at six o'clock. Uh, sorry, you're muted. Okay. Well, this is some golden stuff at the end. If and when you do figure out how to share yours, like Hannah has, can you please place it in the uh, CSAC Connect document? And I'll just uh, put a link right at the very bottom. There's a of our notes today on slide 14. Uh, and we'll call that uh, our CSAC 
pers personal connection collections. Mm. And if anyone's making anything cool for the start of the term, please let me know because uh -huh. <laughs> I need all the help I can get. So, yeah, um, yeah. Okay, and I'll uh, <laughs> I'll look at this video again and then try to share it again to everybody on YouTube <laughs> and see that I'm not doing anything silly. Edit first, yeah. Edit that out. <laughs> but if you're doing silly <laughs> stuff, it's going in. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all good. Okay, I, I'm going to let you guys go because uh, my daughter is uh, starting to call me in the background. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Okay. Thank you as well. Yeah, See you so next long. month. See, See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.